today is an exquisite day because I may have just found my favorite movie I think I've ever watched in my life before. <laughs> forget Star Wars, for, forget Interstellar. How about Killer Clowns from Outer Space? With a K instead of a C. I don't know who came up with that one. Killer Clowns with a K is a movie from the 1980s about, and get this, clowns from outer space that kill people. Who would have thought? <laughs> Not to be mistaken with the clowns from, from Earth that kill people. They don't do that, right? They, they don't. Clowns aside, this movie might might literally just be the best movie that you ever laid your eyes on. First off, the movie starts in a poppin' little burger joint named Big Top Burger, which I can really only assume is the 1980s version of In-N-Out, except, you know, with killer clowns. I don't think this is necessarily needed to say anymore. But the good news is they have goodwill. They still have goodwill. The bad news? They have Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> oh, the movie really starts with the classic 1980 movie makeout spot when we see our first clown, or clown ice cream truck, I should say, pull up on the youngins only to say, We'll give you the stick, you give it a lick, and it'll tickle you all the way down. We'll give you the stick if you give it a lick. <laughs> The movie could have ended there and I would be completely happy. Like, I, I would not be mad at all. And then we get our second glimpse of Dahmer. I don't, <laughs> they could have picked anybody. Jenny, leave while you can. Around six minutes into the movie, I think we get probably the best 1980s visual effects that I, I've personally ever seen. Wow, check that out. Which I can only assume from the movie title is the comet uh, is is the clowns landing on Earth, which literally just sends people into a frenzy. But we do get this masterpiece from Bob. And no, I, I don't actually know if his name's Bob, but take it away, Bob. Bobby Hornswoggle, did you see that little old sky jockey zip down in there, poo? I've watched this seven times, and all I can hear him say is poo, poo. and I think that makes the scene even better to be... <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, the comet turned out to be the clowns. And this might just be my favorite part. Again, this might just be my favorite part. So I'm just gonna let it run. I'm just gonna just go. I'll be greased and fried. What in blue blazes the circus doing up in these parts? At eight minutes into the movie, I don't think they gave Bob a script. I feel like they just sent him into frame and told him to work his magic. <laughs> You know, there's something kind of peculiar around here. Where is everybody? There ain't nobody around. Here's the kicker. You think they're gonna take Bob first. Plot twist, they take the dog, which automatically just ruined the movie for me. Like, I, it was doing so good. But then Bob came in and just solidified himself as my favorite character. What in tarnation's going on here? What in tarnation? <laughs> But then it happens. And I'm not gonna lie, they didn't have to go this hard with the look. I mean, that does, that does look really good. I. I really can't lie about that one. Here, here's the problem. He just straight up murks Bob. No mercy. Just, just murks him. Only then to jump cut into what I can only assume is police brutality. That were just a really weird intro to, you know. <laughs> Two things here. Well, okay. Two things here. Mooney's blood pressure is too damn high. And this kid, I mean, if I ever had to guess what an undercover clown looks like, that's exactly what I would think he looks like. No way around. But I think this scene was mainly to show us that the cop Mooney is just grumpy and that's somehow gonna affect us down the road. You're the problem, you little shit. Spoiler, it does. Bob wasn't the only one to see the comet though, because at some point the kids from the makeout spot, and I say kids lightly because this dude literally looks like he's in his late 30s, go to find where the comet landed. And, and we just, we got this beautiful scene. If instinct serve chief correct, path lie that way. Chad and Brittany wander into the no. tent like Bob did, and although right. we got this 10 out of 10 line. That place is great or what? It looks like it was decorated by clowns are us. Somehow they ended up in the entrance to hell. Dude, I don't, th this, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. At some point they piece it together and they realize the comet is the clown ship. Star! What are you talking about? The shooting star we went to go look for. We are in it! One plus one equals two. And I love this part because they fight for a good five minutes on how cotton candy should be stored in a clown ship from how, or space. Sorry. Saying that this cotton candy looks abnormal. Holy shit, it's Bob. I also love this scene for two reasons. A, the actor in the costume clearly shows he doesn't know how to walk in these shoes, and B, this man is straight up lifting a whole cotton candy human body cocoon like it's a five pound dumbbell. <laughs> this man has to be ripped. The, the whole scene is beautiful. Not only does this look like me in the middle of the night making popcorn, but Chad drops his light, or whatever it is, and the clown just straight up whips out his popcorn machine gun and starts letting that thing sing. <laughs> While they're running slower than me in my dreams. And watch this. Please just watch this because this is, this is fucking brilliant. They get away so the clown literally makes a balloon dog. A balloon, <laughs> a balloon, <laughs> a balloon, <laughs> a balloon
little loon dog to sniff him out. Dude, I don't think AI could write shit this good <laughs> if it wanted to. I mean, the thing is literally on a stick as he runs with it. It's it's goddamn amazing. <laughs> Not only is this whole scene just a work of art, but that's the second dog we've seen die in the first 20 minutes. The fact that they just keep like just killing the dogs off is kind of pissing me off. I'm not gonna lie. This might just hurt its grading in the end. If you stop the movie at 20 minutes and 8 seconds, that's me when I realized I forgot to text her good morning. I wrote that down as a note. I told you not to, but... You still just did it. I love this part. At 20 minutes, we get the hardest scene I think I've ever seen since, well, ever, I think. And before you think that's cool, what's even cooler is the fact that this dude just walked five miles in those shoes at that speed in like five minutes, which might just be a new world record. But the even better part of the scene is hands down the fact that he just does this. And it somehow works! To which he literally says, Ah, bodo. Which I can really only assume means dumbass, but we can we can fight about it in the comments. At around 23 minutes, Chad and Brittany, which by the way, I don't actually know if their names are Brad and Chitney. Chit hmm? Brittany, Chad, Chitney? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know their names. I'm just guessing. Chad and Brittany try to go to explain to the police what they just saw, and well, <laughs> we got it, boys and girls. Killer clowns from outer space. Did it! He did the thing. He did it. My man said the title. <laughs> I swear to you, this movie just keeps getting better. At 25 minutes, we get this. LeBron in that suit? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Basically, the next 10 minutes is the clowns just killing people off like they're from outer space or something. Who would have thought? Not me. But this next bit is where this is where things get spicy. And, and no, I will not give you context clues. Why, you may ask? Because the movie just doesn't give you them. <laughs> Later, this guy breaks the small clown's bike. And not only does he have better foot movement than Floyd Mayweather, but he just straight up uppercuts his head clean off. <laughs> I'm like reading that as I wrote it, and it still doesn't sound real. The next couple minutes might just be my favorite 10 minutes of cinema ever. Not only does this clown get absolutely dripped out beyond measure, <laughs> but holy hell, holy hell, I think we might have a contender for the worst CGI of the month. <laughs> Watch this. I can't make this up, dude. I <laughs> Why does he? Yeah. <laughs> and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, popcorn's alive. <laughs> I mean, I really can't even hate on this one because they actually made it kind of look good. You've got the good reflections on the tile, nice movement, decent color correction. I mean, honestly, if you just showed me this clip alone, I'd be kind of impressed by the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> and if I couldn't be any more impressed, Chester the Clown went hard for no, for no reason. But then while Brad and Thad finally catch up to him to arrest him, he literally kills a whole retirement home like his name was old age. Holy shit! I wrote that down. <laughs> And when Dad and Brad go in for the kill, the clown uses his outer space inch vertical to just go. <laughs> Meanwhile, while everyone is trying to convince Mooney that clowns are real, he he finally actually gets a visit from one. And his reaction is just, it's just brilliant. What the goddamn to do? What do we have here? And what happens next is honestly something I really didn't even see coming. Nah, I'm kidding. My man got kazoo. <laughs> That's what they're called, right? Cause that's a kazoo. Is that a, we're going, it's a kazoo. I'm just going with it. Dad shows up to find that the police station was turned into a twister sheet before finally finding Mooney as a puppet. Do you hear the words I'm saying? This is a, <laughs> this is a movie. Dad shoots the clown, which then sets off what I'm assuming is a nuclear reactor reaction before the clown blows up. It just, it just blows up. <laughs> While that's happening, let's check in on Brittany. Nah, I'm kidding, they put it in a balloon. I, I don't know. Come on, we can't lose 
Debbie. Oh, Debbie's her name. Why did I think of that? I'm still saying Brittany. Brittany's better. Brittany, bitch. The next five minutes is basically Thad, Brad, and the two ice cream men chasing clowns that have Brittany, who are basically going mock Jesus. The scene is properly ended with like the most realistic car crash scene I think I've ever seen in a movie. So if you are scared of car crashes, you might want to look away. Stop the truck! The clowns then show up to, you, you guessed it, the amusement park, where they lined up for what I can only assume to be the next starting five for the next Space Jam movie. And, th and this part's just great, because you have an officer who might win a Grammy for the best delivered line ever. What are you gonna do with those pies, boys? Not only that, but the first clown proceeds to completely whiff the first pie. <laughs> he just completely missed. <laughs> but don't worry, the other pies hit him, which then kills him? Who wrote this? This all leads up to the climax of the movie with the gang going into the into the clown house, the fun house, the frat house. I, dude, I, I I don't know, man. I didn't go to clown school. I'll make this short and simple for you. Thad and Brad go deep into the house to get Brittany. Meanwhile, the ice cream guys are, hold on. Wait, wait, wait hold on, wait, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> Thad and Brad find out that the clown not only kills people, but they drink their blood, which I think makes them look like me uh, during happy hour downtown, except with a little bit more ass. Oh my god, that's a lot of ass. <laughs> that shoots Britney out of the bubble, which is the most common sense thing I think I've seen anybody do all movie. Then again, I've never been attacked by clowns before, so I don't know how I'd react either. And that's that's not a challenge. That's not a challenge. This alerts the clowns, and this is what I think I saw when my dad accidentally gave me too much Brenadryl when I was nine. They run and run only to get cornered, and just when you think they're about to die, Tweedledee and Tweedledum show up and use their ice cream truck to trick the clowns into thinking they are a clown guy. Someone got funding from this, from presenting this. <laughs> And it's phenomenal. I just, I just don't know how anybody can come up with this. It's brilliant. It's like gone past the, the extent of like weird to like, it's, this is the next Shakespeare. Thad, Brad, and Brittany get saved and they quickly leave without dying. Bam, movie's over, wrong. There is a literal clown god. <laughs> There's a literal clown god that comes from the sky, picks up the truck with Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and chucks that thing like it's a five pound dumbbell. <laughs> Which if you look closely, is just a miniature truck that, that they blew up. Although I don't know how they would do it with a real truck, so. Dad stays behind to take on the clown god like Hercules while Brad and Brittany run to get the cops. Meanwhile, the clown ship takes off. And shocker, it's a <laughs> it's a spinning top. <laughs> Who would have thought? Not this guy. Dad then takes his bad, boops the clown on the nose, and explodes the whole ship. Disintegrates it by booping him. And just when you think all the clowns are dead, this lady's hair pulls up. I'm kidding. That felt mean. It's just, it's a funny haircut. We can we can admit that, right? This was the 80s. My mom's gonna kill me when she watches this one. But just like that, movie's over. Everyone goes home happy. Wrong. <laughs> stop, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is phenomenal. Is it? Is it over? Is it over now? <laughs> okay, movie's over. I, I promise this time. I'm not lying to you. But now it's time for my favorite part of the video. Welcome to Gutsy Grade. Where I, where I, what I do? Where I give my overall grade of the movie and what basically what I thought and what I think of it. Not that I'm a movie critic. I really have no like certifications. So storyline, three out of five clowns. And the only reason I say three out of five because I, a lot of it I didn't see coming. And that's just, that's great. You always want that in a movie. CGI, two out of five clowns. Why? Do I really need to comment on that one? Characters, three out of five clowns. My God, if you're gonna make them teenagers, do not give them a receding hairline. But they were fun to make fun of, so I'm gonna <laughs> give it three clowns out of five. Acting, two. My overall gutsy grade for the whole movie in its entirety, I'm gonna give it three out of five clowns because it was fun to watch. I, I just, it was special. If you have any other movies that you would like me to watch, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Make sure you like this video. And if you're new here, well, the hell are you doing? As always, thank you guys for watching. I love and appreciate each and every single one of you. But for now, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Boys.